folded. This here's a toll road, see? You're gonna have to hand over, say, 200 gold if you want to use our road. Hey guys, Mike the Gaming Dad here and welcome back to the channel. Bringing you another build guide this week and this one is inspired by the Daedra, where I present to you the Dramora Lord in Daris. We're going to need to gather gold early on in this build, so side with Raloth during the escape through Helgen for the slightly better loot. This build is going to utilise heavy armour and two handed weapons, and we won't have either of these at the start, so give the Imperials a taste of the fire in your fists. Once they have been downed, collect the key from the Imperial Captain and wear this set of heavy armour. Also grab the light armour set from the other soldier for selling in Whiterun. Continue the assault through Helgen until you get to the torture room, and if the Stormcloak soldiers have survived, well, you know what to do. One of these will be carrying a two-handed axe which we need, and thankfully Raloff was inspecting the cage so didn't witness that. A few practice beheadings, yeah this'll do for now. Now pick the lock and grab all the loot and mage gear, and this set will come in use later when turning iron into gold. Now time to channel your inner Leonidas, no prisoners, no mercy. When you get to the bear, time to level up two handed on everyone's favourite punch bag, Raloth. We aren't going to spend too much time here though, just enough to get to level 50. At the moment we will keep our points even between Magicka, Health and Stamina, but later on everything will go into Health. In terms of our early perk points, we will go with Heavy Armour, with the bulk in two handed for now to help us battle through Skyrim. And I'm also going to drop some into Alchemy as this will be the first skill that we level fully later on. Now that we are outside Helgen, grab yourself a couple of snowberries, we will need these later. There are two just to the left of the cave exit here, and then there is another one on the right. Now time to follow our usual route before we get to Riverwood. First, take the path west and then south over this hill. Directly forward will be a bandit camp, and at the camp grab this blister wart. This is another ingredient which we will need later. You can also grab the stuff here, but don't bother with the light armor skill book. Once you've picked the chest and dealt with the bandits, head north back up the hill the way you came. There is another snowberry here which you can grab. Then turn left and go over this rock face, and this will drop you down onto the Talos worship scene. Raid the dead Thalmor agent for his robes and random enchanted item. If you need to clear any ailments, pray at the shrine and now head east along this road and up to another bandit camp. You picked a bad time to get lost, friend. <sighs> one of the bandits here will carry treasure map one. Also pick up the enchanted robes from within this tent, and there is a one-handed skill book in another tent here, but we don't need it. At the Standing Stone, select the Thief Stone first of all, and then head north across the river towards Anise's cabin. When you reach her cabin, turn east and head down over the rock face. And under here you will find a skeleton which always contains a flawless emerald. 
Once you have this, jump into the river and continue heading east up to Embershard Mine. Inside the mine you will find fly amanita mushrooms. Collect any of these that you find. Two bandits will guard near the entrance, and once these are dealt with there will be a few more mushrooms to pick up. There is also a pickaxe here, so make sure you grab this and mine any iron ore in this section. At the end of the mine will be a little side room with more gems on a table. Make sure you grab these for selling later on. After you exit the mine on your way down to Riverwood, check all of the rotten tree stumps and fallen trees for more Atapanella mushrooms. Before entering Riverwood, head west across the river and up inside this tree stump here for the location of Treasure Map 1. And now you can head down into Riverwood. Our first stop is always Gerda, who will welcome you by allowing you to take any random items she has, which occasionally extends to her wedding and engagement rings. What a gal. Give Camilla this letter. Now if we are picking up a follower in Riverwood, we usually opt for Feindull, but I felt like we should recruit Sven to do our bidding this time. Agree to give Camilla his letter and then he will be yours. I think you deserve some gold from my tips at the inn. Come on Sven, you pathetic little man. I suppose Master... First job Sven, let's break into Feindel's home. I'll take his woodcutter's axe while you stand guard and watch. Now it's time to head to Whiterun and manipulate the simple folk of Whiterun into gifting you their favour. Give the beggar one gold piece to receive the gift of charity. And now we can sell all of our wares for a higher price than before. Manipulation at its finest. You can sell all of your jewels and valuables off in the trader. And all of your spare armour and weapons are down at the blacksmith. Just keep hold of the mage robes and hood for now. Now for some more petty manipulation of the mortals. Firstly, chop some wood with your stolen axe. And then offer to help Carlotta with her bard problem. Speak to Hulda in the inn and firstly sell her the firewood, and this will allow you to sleep in the bed upstairs for free. Also ask her about any rumours and she will tell you about the Shrine of Azura, and this is a quest which we will do shortly. Now deal with Mikhail, and you can either fight him or persuade him to stop. The gift of charity will ensure your persuasion always works, but it's up to you. On my honour. I won't bother Carlotta ever again. Collect your payment from Carlotta. Here's some coin for your help. And now pick the three dragon's tongue flowers from outside the alchemist. Now it's time to head up to Dragon's Reach, but our first location is the dungeon to the right. In here on a table will be a journal entitled Death of a Crimson Dirk and read this to start the quest Beyond the Grave. This is another quest which we will do later. And now we can head inside the main Dragon's Reach Keep. After the speech with Balgruff, seek out his wizard Farangar and purchase the Soul Trap spell from him, another item which we will need later on. It is almost time to leave Whiterun, but before we do, craft yourself a backpack at the blacksmith. The mage one is the most useful as, as it will increase our magicka by 20 points. It doesn't look great with our heavy armour, but we will we'll likely need the carry weight. My Speak to Skulver at the stable and buy one of the wild horse maps as we need to grab ourselves a steed. You won't have to travel far into the plains though west of Whiterun to find the red horse. After a bit of convincing, more than the people of Whiterun I must add, the will of this beast will be broken. Take it back to the stable for some armour and then head east along the road. Our first location is White River Watch, just here on the map.
The main point of interest inside the caves are the imp stool mushrooms, so pick any of these that you find. Continue fighting your way up through White River Watch and leave none alive. At the summit of White River Watch, you'll find the bandit leader. Give him the same treatment. And he'll be carrying the Iron Hand Gauntlets, which will increase our two-handed damage by 15%. You can also grab his armour, it's slightly better than the Imperial set. Survey the pathetic citizens of Wyrum going about their daily business. Our next location is north of the capital at Halted Stream Camp. And you know the drill by now. Snuff them out. And now we can mine our iron ore in peace. Look at Sven just standing there and watching. Useless weakling. After mining all of the ore, make sure you grab the spell tome and transmute mineral ore before leaving this place. You should be able to get quite a lot of ore across both mines. Now this is where the mage backpack and the mage robes and hood come in handy. Equip all three of these and this should give you just enough magicka to be able to use the transmute spell twice and then wait one hour. Repeat this until all of your iron ore has been turned into silver, and then gold. Go back to Whiterun and smelt this into gold ingots. You should have gained a few levels into alteration now, but you will need to get this to level 40 eventually, so I recommend buying one of the flesh spells, probably oak flesh for now, and using this in battle to gain some alteration levels. Now it's time to visit the Shrine of Azura, all the way up in the mountains near Winterhold. This quest will present you with a choice to make of who to return the star to. Choose Nelikar as we want the Black Star. Nelikar will now send you into the star to confront Malin. My disciples have sent me a fresh soul. Good. I was getting. And this is a good location to grab a few Daedra hearts, so make sure you get all of those as well because we'll need them later on. After taking care of Malin, you will now have possession of the Black Star, which will act as an unbreakable soul gem that will capture the black souls of any person you kill. From Winterhold, our next location is directly west, just here on the map. We're about two thirds of the way to Dawnstar here, directly south of Ingvild on the shoreline of the Sea of Ghosts. This is an unmarked location where you'll find the fires of an unfortunate accident. The mage Isra has destroyed herself using the flame cloak spell, and you'll find her necklace on her burnt corpse. But it's the spell book that we are after. It'll likely be too costly to use at the moment, but again this is something that we are gathering for later. From here head southeast to Hobbsfall Cave just here on the map. Once you have fought your way through the cave, you will enter this main chamber. In the corner of the room will be two chests, either side of this bookcase. The chest you want is the one on the right. This is the ancient tome chest and will contain a ton of free destruction spells. The most useful of these are the unbounded ones, high level spells which will come in very handy later in levelling destruction. Let's head back to Whiterun now and complete the first stages of the main quest line. This is Bleak Falls Barrow, and then Dragon Rising where we slay our first dragon. You should by this point have more than 5000 gold, and we have 7325. What you want to do now is wait until night time, it's 10.44pm here, and the Jarl's steward will have gone to bed by this point. I recommend saving your game here just in case you make a mistake, but wake him from his slumber and ask him about purchasing a house in the city. Splendid. There's a house available right now. 
And now what you want to do is position yourself so you have access to the Wonder. cupboard next to his bed. To as soon as you say you'll take it, exit the conversation and open the cupboard. And if you are quick enough, you'll open it before he takes the payment. Now place all of your gold inside the cupboard and he will give you the key to Bree's home, but he cannot take the 5,000 gold as you no longer have it. Hey look, what did I say? Petty manipulation of the mortals of Skyrim. And now you can open up the cupboard and take all of your gold back. Perhaps I can assist you. If you want to furnish your new home, wait until morning when Preventus is back outside again in the keep, and this is when the furnishing conversation option will return. What would you like to purchase? Sven, it is time for you to actually become useful to me. Drop all of your gold ingots on the floor near the gate of Whiterun and command Sven to pick all of this up. Still here. All right. What is it? What do you need? Now exit Whiterun and walk back in again, and all of the ingots will be on the floor, plus inside Sven's inventory. So you can either command Sven to pick them up again, or take his right and drop behind. even more on the floor right. to be collected. What what do you need? As you can see here, we now have 63 inside Sven's inventory. I repeated this quite a few times and now we have over 500 of these. And this is where we needed Bree's home as a place to store them until we need them. It is time to leave Whiterun again, so take the carriage over to Morthal. First of all, head to the area around the Apprentice Stone and look for Canis Root. They can be hard to spot in this location, but there are quite a few of them around the marshes here. Our second location is Mirwatch, just here on the map. Complete the most simple and shortest quest in history to gain an awesome home. And the reason we want this location is the garden. Plant Dragon's Tongue, Fly Amanita and Mora Tapinella in the soil. And the amount you plant of each will depend on how many you actually have in your inventory. But make sure you leave here with 13 of the former two and 18 Mora Tapinella. Once planted, wait one hour downstairs and then you can head back upstairs and take your ingredients. And as you can see here, I have got 13 Dragon's Tongue and Fly Amanita now, plus 18 Mora Tapinella. It's now time to head southwest from Morthal to Skyrim's Cash Cow, Golden Hills Plantation. Thanks a lot! Here, take this, for all your hard work. Complete the short quest here to gain the keys to the plantation, and then it's time to get to work. Our first task is to maximise our farming space. So chop some wood, and then quarry some stone. And this will allow you to build the stone planters. Eventually you want to build all of these additional outbuildings, but for now just build the planters. Now it's time to get planting. Plant your 13 dragon's tongue, 13 fly amanita and 18 more tapanella across the plantation. Now wait inside 24 hours again. And now you can pick all your ingredients. And the first two give you four of each each time. So 13 times four is 52 every yield. And the Mora Tapanella give you three each time. So 18 times three is 54 every yield. You want to repeat this until you have between 400 and 450 of each of these ingredients as shown here. And now it's time to sleep in the bed upstairs to get the well rested bonus, and then get crafting. I've already got two points in the base of the alchemy tree as shown here, plus physician. The next perk point we want is benefactor which unlocks at level 30, and then we will continue to fill up the base of the skill tree. Let's combine our first potion, and now we're going to do this up to level 30. Now we can stop and drop that perk point into Benefactor, which will give our potions a positive effects a 25% greater magnitude. 
Now go back to making potions, and this time up to level 40. And now we can put a third perk point into the base of alchemy, which will increase the strength by a further 20%. Now you just want to repeat this process all the way up to level 100 and you should have 7 perk points in alchemy and your tree will look like this. I've skipped forward a bit now to the point that we have all the outbuildings built at the farm as shown here. Once you have all of these constructed it is time to ask Sven to steward your farm. I'd be honoured to be your steward. You build a fine steading here. And Sven's first tasks are to hire some farmhands for 500 gold. And then spend 500 gold on purchasing a cow, goats and chickens as well. And this will allow the farm to generate generous amounts of profit every day. Is there anything else you Whilst we are here I'll show you the one poison I use with this build that I recommend making a few of now as it will come in handy as we progress through the levels quickly and the game gets a bit more challenging. This is Canis Root, Imp Stool and Mora Tapinella, which makes a crippling paralysis and damage health potion. I would recommend planting some of these ingredients as well so you always have stocks of this poison ready. Now it's time to complete the Beyond the Grave quest which will take you to Falkreath for the first time. After inspecting the grave of Edward and reading the note, you will need to head northwest to Knife Point Ridge. Bring some health potions with you as you'll need to take out a smuggler who is wearing a set of Daedric armour. It's not a bad set as well, even though some of the enchantments aren't that beneficial to us, this is our first Daedric set and a big improvement on your current armour. This will do us until we can make our own later on. Return to the Standing Stones now and switch to the Warrior Stone. And now head back to Whiterun and join up with the companions. Yes, perhaps. A certain strength of spirit. Once you are in, you can speak to Farkas who will train you in heavy armour. And I highly recommend buying this training every time you level up now as we're going to level quickly. And heavy armour is a skill we are going to need, but it won't level organically anywhere near as quickly as our other skills. In order to make this process of training a lot easier, you can utilise both the Golden Hills Prophet and selling the potions you made. Catch a ride to Windhelm and then buy passage to Solstheim down at the docks. Find the merchant Fethis Alor in Ravenrock and what you want to do is purchase any filled soul gems he has. It doesn't matter which size for now, just buy them all. Then sell him all the potions we made earlier until he has run out of gold. Now save your game, attack him and reload the save, and this will reset his inventory. Now just repeat the process of buying all of his filled soul gems, selling him your potions and save, attack and reload each time. I've completed this and we have over 42,000 gold now, plus we have about 200 different filled soul gems. We will eventually need about 250 of these to use for levelling plus about 30 to 35 black or grand soul gems for making gear, but this is a good start. The best use of all this gold we're carrying now is to buy training, and if you do run out of gold, use the farm to make more potions to sell. It's finally time to level up smithing, so go back to Bree's home, sleep and then grab your ingots. I've duplicated 30 more here now, so we've got 532 in total. Smith some of these into gold amulets. I'm going to do 30 just in case we need them, and then the rest can be turned into gold rings. You should have enough here to get to above level 90 smithing, and this is where we want to reach as this will allow us to unlock Daedric smithing. In total you want to spend 6 perk points here, the two main ones are Arcane Blacksmith and Daedric Smithing. Now return to the Standing Stones and switch to the Mage Stone. Speak to the Coachman again and this time travel up to Solitude. 
Our first stop is Radiant Raiment for various items and enchantments. Firstly, grab yourselves a few set of Captain's Boots and Captain's Clothes as shown here. You'll need to do the save, attack and reload trick in order to get all of this. Also grab a few sets of gloves and a few hats. And then the enchantments you want to pick up are Destruction, Alchemy, Health, Magicka, Two-Handed Damage, Sneaking, Conjuration, Alteration, Smithing, and Stamina. I already had some of these gathered but I just wanted to show that it's possible to get all of that here. Now head to the Fletcher and pick up a bow that has the Soul Trap enchantment on it. And finally go to the Alchemist for an Enchanter's Elixir, the 25% version. If she doesn't have this, again, just use the save, attack and reload trick. Until next time. There is one more enchantment we need to get, and to get this head back to Solstheim and find Captain Veleth outside Ravenrock. Help him defeat the Ashborn and then go and investigate Fort Frostmouth for him. In here you'll have to defeat General Falx and take the Champion's Cudgel, which has the Chaos enchantment on it, one of the most powerful offensive enchantments in the game. And it's now time for us to level enchanting, so head back to Whiterun, sleep and then grab around 250 to 300 of the gold rings we made earlier. You can disenchant all of your gear now if you wish, but the first one we will definitely need to do is the sneaking one. Once you've learnt this, start enchanting gold rings with this enchantment, and start off with the petty soul gems and work your way up through the sizes. I also recommend doing what we did for alchemy, and that is to put perk points in at various stages so your enchantments are always stronger which will make levelling quicker. And the perk points you want are the 5 in the base of the tree, plus the 3 up the middle up to extra effect. And when complete, your tree will look like this. With the tree filled up, it's time to start making gear. And for this, always use grand or black soul gems. You don't want the small ones anymore. Our first set is going to be destruction and conjuration. So put this on a hat, ring, necklace and set of captain clothes or boots, but just one. If done correctly, each piece will equate to a 25% reduction. Now repeat this process, but this time use the alteration enchantment. Again, 4 pieces of equipment for this, 25% reduction each time. And now we're going to take the 25% enchanted elixir we picked up in solitude earlier, and this time make 4 pieces of equipment with the alchemy enchantment. These are gloves, a ring, an amulet, and a hat, and with the elixir the effect of these will be 25% stronger potions from each item. Time for some power levelling. Equip the set with destruction and conjuration on it, and if you look at the soul trap spell, it will now say it will cost zero to cast it. So find yourself a dead body, or make one, it's up to you and then repeatedly cast the spell over and over again, and this will very quickly level Conjuration up to 100. You can see now we are starting to prioritise our points into health, but in terms of Conjuration perks, I recommend spending 5 around the left of the tree up to Twin Souls. Don't bother spending two in summoner, you don't really need it. And now your tree will look like this. Now go to your destruction spells and select the unbounded storm spell. And again this should say zero cost to cast, if done correctly. Now dual cast the spell and without letting go, fast travel across the map. Preferably to an unmanned location. Don't travel to a town as you'll likely kill everyone, make a mess and end up with a few thousand gold bounty on your head. You may want that, I don't know, it's up to you. I've travelled to the Apprentice Stone and our skill is at level 83 now, so let's just repeat that step and that should get us to 100.
There we go. Now for perks, I'm going to spend six here. And these are Novice, Dual Casting, Impact, Augmented Flames 1 and 2, and Intense Flames. Now travel back to Winterhold and join the college. And this is where you want your Alteration skill at level 40. Once at 40, Tolfdeer will sell the Telekinesis spell. Purchase this and then switch over to your 100% alteration cost reduction set. Drop any item you don't need on the floor and then similar to destruction, you want to pick up the item and then without letting go, click onto the world map and then fast travel across the map. And that is alteration at level 100 as well, even quicker than destruction. And for our perks, I'm going to put 5 in. The three main ones are magic resistance 1, 2 and 3. Locate the Khajiit caravans and you want to buy from them 1 gold canet and a combination of 3 stoneflower petals or drug wax. It can be 3 of 1 ingredient or two of one and one of another, it doesn't matter. You only need two now, but you'll need three eventually. Now head back to Dragon's Reach and equip the four pieces of alchemy gear we made earlier, the 28% ones. Now combine the snowberries we gathered right at the very start of this video with either stoneflower petals or drug wax. And this will make a fortify enchanting potion. Drink this and make yourself the exact same set of fortify alchemy gear. So gloves, a ring, an amulet and a hat. Equip your new, more powerful alchemy set and make the same potion of enchanting again. And now we're going to repeat ourselves again, but this time we need to include smithing in our enchantment. And this requires you to be very quick. So you may want to make yourself a second potion if you aren't confident how quick you'll be able to make these before the 30 seconds runs out. Or you can save your game like me. Drink the potion and now you want to make gloves with alchemy and smithing. A necklace with alchemy and smithing. A ring with alchemy and smithing. Captain clothes with smithing. Captain boots with smithing and a hat with alchemy. And these five pieces now with 35% on them will be your alchemy and smithing set. All of the weaker equipment we've built up to now you can sell or get rid of. And what you can do now is combine the blister wall which we picked up back at the bandit camp with the gold cannon and this will make a powerful smithing potion. It's likely at the level you'll be at now that you receive a visit from Skyrim's postman and he'll give you the stranger's plea which starts the quest, the cause. And this is an amazing quest, but see it through to the end to enter an oblivion gate to the Deadlands. As a big fan of the Lord of the Rings, seeing this for the first time I immediately thought, Mordor. And there are a few things for us to do here. Firstly, it's a great place to gather more Daedra hearts, and in total we will need five of these. Secondly, after defeating one of the two stronger Dramora here and his horse, you can pick up the Conjure Daedric Horse Spell Tome from inside one of these. Head back to the Land of the Living and it's time to make ourselves some Daedric gear. And what we want are some boots, gauntlets, plate armour and a great sword. Don't worry about a helmet, we'll use a circlet for this build and we won't need that extra armour rating. Now make yourself another enchanting potion, and this is where we need the third drug wax or stoneflower petals. Save your game again if you aren't confident of how quick you'll be, and then chug your potion. And what you want to enchant are the following. Chaos and Soul Trap on the sword. Conjuration and Destruction on the chest. 
Conjuration and Destruction on the Circlet. Stamina and two-handed damage on the boots. Magicka and two-handed damage on the gauntlets. Health and two-handed damage on the amulet. And finally, health and two-handed damage on the ring. Looking pretty good. Still wearing your crafting suit? Drink the smithing potion we made earlier and make sure you have quite a few ebony ingots ready for this, because you will level up the equipment a lot. It'll likely drag your smithing up a few more levels, so you can probably level each item more than once. I started with smithing 94, and managed to get all the way to 100 now through levelling each item at least twice. And even without the helmet, our armour rating is over 800, well above the armour cap. The Jarl is his alone. And the base damage of our sword, even built before the enchantment comes into play, is 675. A few final things before this build is finally ready. Firstly, pick up the Conjure Dramora Lord spell from Finnis at the college. And your standing stone isn't massively important for this build. But if you want to be able to tank dragons on legendary, I recommend the Lord Stone for the extra 25% magic resistance. With this you will negate 55% of storm and frost damage, and your fire resistance will be above the game cap for 85% due to the Dark Elves racial ability, so fire breathing dragons will barely touch you. And this is your completed build guys. Twin Souls is required to have both of the horse and Dramora Lord conjured at the same time. It's a fairly easy build to use, you have a minimum of 4 spells, Conjured Dramora Lord and Daedric Horse, Flame Cloak spell and whichever fire spells you want to use it's up to you, and then your massive sword and that's it. What a sweet look this is though, it might be my favourite build to date visually at least, and it looks even better once you get either the Dark Elves racial ability going or the Flame Cloak spell. This is the more understated racial ability. And now for the more visual flame cloak. And in terms of playstyle, just blast away with fire and two-handed attacks. You're there to cause maximum pain and destruction. I think we're on legendary difficulty here. Yeah, we are. So on Legendary your Destruction spell damage will be low, so it's up to you if you want to play at that level, or lower the difficulty and do more fire damage. But you'll be able to tank most things and deal heavy damage with your sword on Legendary. And this bandit chief in Daedric armour, like me, took an absolute beating. I've already shown most of the skill trees, but the ones I've not shown here are two-handed and heavy armour, but I'll put all of the perk points in the description as well. And that is my Dramora Lord build guys, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, I'm Mike the Gaming Dad and I'll see you next time.